So just as I think a music teacher should have a favorite composer and an art teacher should have a favorite artist, a math teacher should have a favorite mathematician. And if you don't have a favorite mathematician, might I interest you <laughs> in Leonard Euler. He is generally uh, considered one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, but not the greatest, because in 1937 in the book Men of Mathematics by E.T. Bell, they said that the top three mathematicians were Archimedes, Newton, and Gauss. In 2015, just last week, a biography about Euler came out, which said that he is one of the top four mathematicians <laughs> in the world, along with Archimedes, <laughs> Newton, and Gauss. <laughs> which means he's the only person we know exactly what number mathematician <laughs> he is. <laughs> and under the new BCS rules, he gets to compete uh, in the playoffs. <laughs> now, Euler was also a great teacher and actually a great person. And people would send him problems, and he never thought of any problem as being not worthy of study. So somebody sends him this, this question, you know, in how many ways can the number 50 be written as a sum of seven distinct positive integers? And, and he, he answered the question, uh, but he didn't just do that. And he also did not do it by figuring out the 522 numbers. But he figured out a shortcut for this, and he basically invented a type of math that's called partition theory now. Partitions are ways of writing a number as a sum of, of numbers. And there's a lot of them, like the number 12 has 77 different ways of writing it as a sum of integers. Exactly 15 of those ways have no repeated numbers. Exactly 15 of those ways have, repeated, have, have only odd numbers with repeats permitted. So what Euler noticed is that for at least the number n equals 12, the number of ways of writing 12 as a sum of unique numbers, and the number of ways of writing 12 as a sum of odd numbers with repeats permitted is equal. <laughs> and the question is, is this a coincidence? Because it's not just true for 12, but it's true for 13, it's true for 14, it's true for 15, it's true for 16, it's true for 17, it's true for 18, and it's true for 19. But is it always true? Well, Euler proves that it is, and he uses just four things from high school math. And the first one is polynomial equality. <laughs> we teach our students that two polynomials are equal if all their coefficients are equal. Conversely, if we know the two polynomials are equal, then we can conclude that all their coefficients are equal. The second thing from high school math is the idea of multiplying polynomials together. And we teach our students FOIL, uh, that we can, every parentheses, we choose one thing from each parentheses, and that becomes a term in the product. And with binomials, there are one, two, three, four ways of doing that. Whereas if we're multiplying together multiple things, we still have to take one thing from each parentheses. There'll be more combinations, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Euler creates a complicated polynomial, which is an infinite product. As you can see, each one has a 1 and a plus and an x, and each term's x co uh, exponent is one larger than the one before. This is a special polynomial because if you multiply it out, some of the terms will have, for instance, x to the sixth as their exponent, like if I use all the ones and the one x to the sixth term, and then all the ones after it, I'll get something that's x to the sixth. But there are other ways to get x to the sixth, like using the first x and the x to the fifth and ones everywhere else. Or I could use most of the ones, but use the x squared from the second one and the x to the fourth from the fourth one. Or I could even use the x, the x squared, the x cubed from the first three and ones from then on. There are, these are the only four, and if we multiply this whole thing out, x to the sixth would have a coefficient of four, and that four is also the number of ways to write the number six as a sum of unique 
integers. Euler creates a second polynomial, which I'll call Q. This one's more complicated. Each individual one goes on forever. There's an infinite number of them. They all start with one. The first one has x to the first, then x to the one plus one, x to the one plus one plus one, and that continues, getting a new one each time. The second one starts with one plus x to the third, the next odd number, x to the three plus three, the next one starts with one, the next to the fifth, x to the five plus five, and this thing goes on forever. This special polynomial, if you multiplied it all out, would have some terms that have become x to the sixth also. For instance, I could use the x from the first, the one from the second, the x to the fifth from the third, and ones from then on. Or I could use the x to the one plus one plus one, and the x to the third from the second, and ones from then on. Or I could use the x to the 3 plus 3 in the middle one and the 1 in the 1. Or I could use an x with 6 ones. And there ends up being uh, 4 of those. That 4 is the number of ways of writing 6 as a sum of odd numbers with repeats permitted. So already, that's very creative. Here's the third thing from high school math. Infinite geometric series formula which tells us that uh, it's s equals one, 1 over 1 minus r geometric series. Every term is, uh, is, is the one before multiplied by the same thing. The most famous example is this one, 1 plus a half plus a half squared. Nice, nice picture to illustrate that it equals 2. So here's just another <laughs> equality. Each of these polynomials is a geometric series. It doesn't look like it at first, but when you put it together, you see that, the, that each uh, x to the third squared is x to the sixth, and x to the third to the third is x to the ninth. So each of them, so it uses this uh, polynomial, uh, the, this uh, infinite geometric series, to simplify this q of x. Now you're allowed in math to multiply the top and bottom of a fraction by one in any form, and he chooses to multiply it by this. And at this point, we start to think it's like a movie where the good guy is in trouble. It doesn't look like he's going to get out of this. But here, Euler uses the fourth thing <laughs> from uh, basic math, which is difference of perfect squares factoring. So we teach our students x squared minus 25 can be factored. That's also true if you have things like 1 minus x to an even power. On the numerator and denominator that he just multiplied have x, 1 minus x to the even power. And if he factors just the top and starts canceling this 1 minus x with that one, and this 1, one minus x squared with that one, and this 1 minus x cubed with that one, and continues doing his canceling, he ends up with this, which was this. <laughs> which was equal. And that means that it wasn't a coincidence that the number of ways of writing 6 as a uh, ways of writing it with uh, unique integers, as a sum of unique integers, was the same as the number of ways of writing it as uh, a sum of odd integers with repeats permitted. Now, I don't, never really got music or art or poetry. <laughs> but when I see something like this, I think it's what people who do get music or art or poetry get. But I think it's better because I think those things require a filter through your eyes and your ears. And this one, to me, goes right to my brain. Thank you.